What is going on, boys and girls of YouTube? So, we did the top five junglers yesterday. Today, we got top five solo laners. And I said I was going to do them all. So, guess what? I'm actually doing them all. I'm wearing the same fucking shirt because I'm recording these back to back to back. So when you guys start your rank grind, you guys know what the fuck to play. You know what to level. You know what items to get from Smite Source. You've got everything locked down to win your game. So, I got you. Fucking got you. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump right into it so you guys aren't waiting around for too long. So we're doing solo laners. Our top solo laners have shifted from my last top five list, mainly because I went off of what was available. And I told you guys solo lane would probably be pretty volatile in terms of changes and gods. Well, there were some gods that were super underrated by me. And even after some nerfs that went through in this pre-patch a couple weeks ago, they're still fucking strong. And it's obvious they're fucking strong. So they are definitely gonna be mentioned in this top five video. But before we just can get to that point we'll talk about what's happening number five on the list achilles super simple super basic leveling wise uh i mean this shouldn't be confusing if you guys are wondering why he's so good he's a god with sustain he can avoid abilities very easily with his three he's got cc and a stun and he has a fucking execute his early game might not be the best meaning he's like one to like three four five might not be the best but then he kind of starts ramping up very fast so on achilles solo you're leveling your three first yeah and then really like the goal here is your three and your one are going to be your core abilities that you're focusing on your three allows you to poke the most assuming you're hitting the creeps and the god in the lane you're able to get off two of them so you're doing a lot of damage poke wise you're still doing a lot of clear and you're able to move around and avoid abilities very easily you are leveling the two so you have a little bit of sustain and you have the ccr when necessary that's going to allow for you to pop it if they're going to try to cc you in lane if it's a god of the sun or something you can then reduce that very easily it's also not crazy expensive in terms of cost so you're maxing the three whenever possible right like like we already talked about about. you're gonna want to have the ultimate for the execute so leveling the three leveling the one outside of that your one is a very important ability outside of the three you're then leveling the two to max because the ultimate doesn't really matter to level up it's not important to level up yes it does a lot of damage late game but usually you're using it for an execute and that execute threshold does not change it is always 30 percent. so it is the last ability you will level up and there's your leveling guide for achilles solo play style super straightforward get to the team fights start cc'ing the backline with your stuns poking the backline with your three avoiding abilities with your three and then executing them you guys should understand that if you've played the game at all you know what's happening number four on the list is gonna be wukong wukong has been fairly consistent as a warrior in the solo lane very safe because of his ultimate almost impossible to kill in lane and gank wise even in team fights very very difficult to kill his one does a lot of damage and very easily clears because it's doing extra damage to minions that he hits so he's doing 30 percent more damage so your clear is insane with your one you have a lot of damage and poke with your three a lot of setup and then your two is also a slow allows you to auto more allows you to have even more cc in the kit and his aoe so you can hit multiple people leveling wukong ability wise should be straightforward you're gonna want to max the one whenever possible this is for the soul aid remember that so ideally if you think you're be ganked you're level three most of the time you're pretty safe to just focus on clearing so i'm leveling the one you have full clear with these two abilities and then have the three just for the safety the ultimate so you don't get ganked and then you're maxing the one to guarantee the clear and for max poke whenever possible now here's where if you're good on the god you're going to want to level the three the three is going to allow you to do the most damage with the tiger for ganks and stuns and team fights and it's going to hit really really hard the two is way easier to hit does a little bit less damage has a little bit less scaling and is on a lower, lower cooldown though so if you're just spamming this to be annoying and you're not really consistent with your three then you're probably gonna level your two here if you're ideally like rotating early and looking for big ganks and big damage you're going to level the three here whenever possible level the three i like to level the alt when i do play the soul lane here but realistically leveling the two is just gonna be better you don't need the sustain from the alt if you're playing correctly and positioning correctly but late game having the ultimate leveled up will allow you to get that extra sustain to do whatever the f you want after you go in and try to go on the back line but usually on wukong you aren't sitting in the alt for the sustain you're using the alt for a quick reset and for the the distance so you'll blink onto a mage you'll three stun them you'll one them and you'll two them they'll usually dash away and then you'll ultimate dunk on top of them and they should be dead at that point if they aren't already dead or they've used all their actives so wukong's play style and simplicity is there just get used to landing the three and you'll love the god it'll work perfectly for you as a warrior if that's what you're looking to play number three on the list is a guardian it is cthulhu you're seeing him banned and picked all the fucking time shouldn't be confusing should be super straightforward the reason he's so good he has a stun a knockback a root i believe the root also is a slow before it roots he has a cc immune alt he can heal his teammates he has insane range he has no movement penalty penalty in the ultimate and he's pretty much unkillable because of his ultimate that being said leveling the abil abilities goes back and forth it depends on your matchup you're either leveling the three which will be the dash pressure 
clear with the potential of doing more damage to the enemy person and killing them and then you have the one for the clear most of you will probably be super consistent with leveling the one because then you'll have your three to disengage if you ever get ganked in your games so that's how i'm looking at it from my point of view for you if you're a really good player a lot of the matchups you will level the three and the three will be really consistent because your one can be pressed uh, out cleared out pressured your three does poke damage it allows you to clear and do damage to somebody so the person doesn't have to sustain your three it might come up a little bit more so here's your leveling uh kit when you are maxing the one on the flip side you would just swap your one points into your three if that's what you need to do i like now that they're changing the duration on the ultimate it has a lot of value in leveling the ultimate but you also get a lot out of just leveling the abilities so it really just depends on how the game's going for you but leveling the ultimate is really important for this god it gives you a lot of team fight value and anti-gank potential so there's a leveling guide for you remember swap the one and the three depending on your matchup try them out see which ones are just work better for you some people don't pick up both you can also go watch final k's videos on the god he has i think his most recent cthulhu videos he has one where he levels one one where he levels the three and i think the one is just gonna be more consistent for a normal player for you guys so there's Cthulhu, number three on the top five soul laners list number two is hades we've talked about hades a lot people just suck playing in the hades the sustain is hard to play around people don't build anti-heal till later a lot of the matchups for hades are definitely in hades favor especially when people aren't used to playing against hades your ultimate after they change it a while back makes you super tanky because you've got protections and you just have the 10 percent reduced damage while in the ultimate so it's nearly impossible to kill you in the ultimate and then you're just your sustain built in is ridiculous so you are maxing the three whenever possible your one is going to be used for your escape like i said maxing the three whenever possible you're maxing the two outside of that and the ultimate outside of that so here is your full leveling guide boom 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 and there you go because your one is mainly used for escape it does do a lot of damage once you have it leveled up but the safety you get out of having the two second silence on your two so it's a lot of cc you get a lot of damage and sustain out of your three and then the ultimate for the setup or the damage reduction when you are in the team fights or you are being ganked there's hades leveling guide you guys know how to play hades in lane poke a lot sustain a lot rotate around use your ultimate to kill the immobile gods boom simple not hard here's our last one on the list which i hyper underestimated and just didn't give any credit to was amaterasu amaterasu was popping off to the point where they nerfed the fuck out of her too they they nerfed it. it's like 40 damage reduce at max rank for the full damage charge it was, it's already in the game so now this is the actual thing she's still doing so good she just dumpsters everybody i mean we were talking about this last night she has a cc immune ult that does a fuck ton of base damage 260 with 50 percent scaling that's almost 800 damage with no extra damage from scaling of a warrior ultimate you have a silence and a mobility out of the three which also does 310 damage plus scaling you have a two which does a ton of damage an absolute ridiculous amount of damage and then it gives you self damage mitigation while it's up so it's insane while you're taking damage really really good ability and then your one which is sustain movement speed or power depending on which aura you're in and it's on a short ass cooldown plus the passive the ability to kill objectives with ama is ridiculous so on amaterasu you're really just worrying about leveling the two so you have that clear there and then the one is for your sustain so ideally in lane i would do this so you're clearing and you're not worried about clearing as much level the two whenever possible level the one outside of that whenever the possible because of the sustain you get out of the one levels up with each rank plus the power movement speed aura is ridiculous so you're doing this boom leveling the molt whenever possible so two all one and your three i just up leveling there but back to two all your one your three you guys get it shouldn't be too confused and boom there's full leveling god for amaterasu honorable mentions are gods worth noting just because gods aren't mentioned in the top five of any of this list doesn't mean they're bad it just means these are the most prioritized gods you have other gods in the soul lane which are good you have king arthur you have tier uh with tier you have tier and then in terms of guardians you're seeing a lot of kabraken played a little bit more lately and a lot of uh cerberus both of these are a lot more risky kabraken having pretty much no escape cerberus is escape used for a lot of early clear but he just does so much damage that if it is a good matchup serb and rack in our options and then as we mentioned king arthur and tier tier is a little bit safer just isn't as potent in team fights is very good very annoying i'd say he's like a six you could even throw him in the top five if you want to argue it but i'd say he's like a six on the top gods list and then king arthur doesn't have an escape but has a ton of mobility so he's a little bit less safe than a lot of these other gods and that's why you're not seeing him in the top five if you guys have any questions or you're confused about anything drop questions and comments in the comments below make sure you're subscribed hit the like button if you're liking these top five videos if you want me to do this where it's like right when a when a big patch is hitting or the ranked is about to reset and you want to know what gods to play i can do this this is easy i, I record all five and i'll just drop them for you guys so you guys know what to do in each role i think it'll help you a lot especially if you listen and you prioritize these gods i think you'll get a lot more wins and you'll see a lot more success in these roles from these videos remember guys another video coming later tonight or tomorrow whenever just 
in like three videos a day um remember i have the second youtube channel the well i have three youtube channels this one i have an all game youtube channel where it's just anything that's not smite and is video games so among us fall guys whatever game i'm playing tarkov whatever the fuck i'm playing um, and then a third channel which is my vlog channel which is going to become a daily vlog channel uh starting like literally tomorrow the video i've already vlogged today so that'll go up and that channel will be flooded with content so make sure you're subscribed to all three i appreciate the support guys and i'll see you in the video later today and tomorrow